Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pakistan's support for terrorism sparks controversy amid Gaza crisis. Atrocities against minorities in Sindh continues. Jammu and Kashmir police crushes Pakistan's efforts of narco-terrorism. As the world observes the distressing escalation of violence between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip, a fresh controversy has come to the forefront, shedding light on Pakistan's alleged support for acts of terror in the region. While Pakistanis have convened their solidarity with the Palestinian people through protests and rallies, concerns are mounting about the resurgence of Pakistan-backed terror groups and their endorsement of Hamas. Hamas, the Islamist organization responsible for the devastating attacks on Israeli towns, resulting in significant loss of life, has cast a shadow of uncertainty over the future of thousands affected by these attacks. Here's our special report. Hamas has only one agenda, to destroy Israel and to murder Jews. While global powers join in condemning the actions of Hamas, the extremist group has found support from Pakistan. In Karachi, jaish e Muhammad, a banned terrorist organization based in Pakistan, organized a rally in support of Hamas, which is engaged in a war with Israel following rocket attacks on Israeli communities near the Gaza border on October 7. Israel has responded with extensive airstrikes targeting Hamas hideouts in Gaza. Hamas is recognized as a terrorist organization by multiple countries, including the United States. During the rally in Karachi, announcements in Urdu were made via loudspeakers with flags of both Pakistan and jaish e Muhammad being prominently displayed. South Asian terrorist outfits unfortunately have no idea as to what their actual strength is. If they are foolish enough to take on the Israeli state on behalf of Hamas, not only will be they eliminated in double, eliminated in double quick time, rest assured that the Israelis will strike them where they are. That is not in Palestine, not in the Gaza Strip, not in Israel, but in Pakistan itself. So all this talk about them joining Hamas is something that they get enthused about from time to time when they see those grotesque pictures, those macabre pictures, the horrible pictures of Ham the terrorists killing women and children. If they believe that when they go to fight on behalf of Hamas against the Israelis, they will face women and children, they are mistaken. If they face women, they will be armed women of the Israeli Defense Forces who will take them apart in no time at all. So all this is talk. It is the talk of a coward. It's the talk of a terrorist. Jaish-e Mohammed is the same group that claimed responsibility for the suicide bombing of Indian Army soldiers on February 14, 2019, resulting in the tragic loss of at least 46 soldiers in Pulwama. India, the United Kingdom and the United States have designated JM as a terrorist organization. Masood Azhar, the founder of JM, was designated as a global terrorist by the United Nations in May 2019. Furthermore, in Islamabad, hundreds of Pakistanis, including men, women and children, gathered for a rally expressing their support for the Palestinians in response to Israel's actions against Hamas. This rally was organized by the prominent Islamist party Jamaat Islami and participants waved both Palestinian and Pakistani flags while carrying placards that read Free Palestine. However, the situation becomes controversial when examining statements and actions within Pakistan that appear to endorse Hamas. फलस्तीन के मुजाहिदों और हमास के 
غازیوں کے ساتھ کھڑے ہیں اور اس موقع پر ہم یو این او اور امریکہ کی بے حصی نہیں بلکہ اس موقع پہ ظالم کے ساتھ کھڑے ہونے کو اس کی بھی شدید مذمت کرتے ہیں With each passing day, the Israel-Hamas conflict intensifies, resulting in a tragic toll. The ongoing deadly war has claimed the life of more than 3,000 people, with thousands more sustaining injuries. Hamas terrorists have targeted both civilians and soldiers, and more than 200 people have been taken hostage. The recent surge in violence in the region has caused a significant loss of life and extensive destruction. As the conflict continues to escalate, Gaza's morgues have become overwhelmed with bodies and Palestinian civilians have sought refuge in UN schools to escape the relentless Israeli airstrikes. The situation has taken a dire turn, with Israeli authorities uncovering the bodies of families executed by Hamas fighters further exacerbating the gravity of the situation. A murderous attack such as this that targets women, children, beheads young babies, rapes women, non-combatants before killing them and then burning them while they are alive. If this is the kind of action that elicits or is able to elicit so much sympathy among the masses in Pakistan, then I would say Pakistan is in very serious trouble. So the poison that has entered Pakistan system or was made to enter Pakistan system so many decades ago, unfortunately has been mainstream and people in Pakistan, at least large masses are no longer able to distinguish between right and wrong between what is a legitimate struggle, a legitimate military operation and a terrorist attack. Amidst the continued Israeli airstrikes in Gaza, the toll is staggering. Meanwhile, a staggering 1,87,000 people have sought shelter in UN schools. As Israel's blockade persists, vital services such as electricity, water, sustenance and fuel remain severely disrupted. While Pakistan's support for the Palestinian cause is well established, questions remain about the extent to which this support extends to Hamas, a group known for its involvement in acts of terrorism and the use of violence. This contentious situation sparks apprehension regarding Pakistan's position on global terrorism and its contribution to fostering harmony and stability in the region. To delve deeper into this matter, I had a conversation with former Indian diplomat Anil Trigunayat. During our discussion, he not only highlighted the global threats arising from the Israel-Hamas conflict, but also offered his insights on potential solutions. Additionally, we explored the resurgence of Pakistan-backed terror groups and their association with Hamas, aiming to gain a better understanding of the entire issue. So a brutal attack by Hamas terrorists in Israel has again raised concerns over rising terror threats globally. How do you see this prevailing situation? Well, firstly, uh, the world must condemn. Everybody should condemn. Prime Minister Modi has condemned these attacks uh, by Hamas, which has been designated as a uh, terrorist organization by several countries in the world. And what they did to the innocent people uh, was uh, unacceptable uh, and must uh, of hurt the conscience of the world, uh, so to say, and they must rise to the occasion. So sympathy is with Israel. At the same time, I think that there are much greater and much deeper issues. Those are the issue of Palestine, the, which has been one of the core causes. So until and unless uh, the world gets together, Israel is on the same page, the, the Palestinians are on the same page, the Arab world is on the same page, to resolve this situation to arrive at some kind of a solution to the Palestinian problem, which has been more than 100 years old, uh, I do not see that these things are going to ever get stopped. Pictures are emerging from South Asia, especially Pakistan, in support for Hamas terrorists. So, sir, what does it exactly reflect? What do you think? 
Well, Pakistan, if the pictures are coming, so it corroborates that what Pakistan stands for. If they are in support of Palestinian cause, I can understand. India also supports. Prime Minister Modi has clearly said, and then Ministry of External Affairs has said that there should be a two-state solution. There should be, uh, they should stand side by side. That's our position. That's the global position, so to say. Uh, if Pakistani militant groups, obviously, militants everywhere have a great nexus. They support one another, morally and also materially. And therefore, uh, if that thing is coming out from Pakistan, it clearly shows that Pakistan has, has always been acknowledged as a state that indulges in cross-border terrorism, whose foreign policy is driven by cross-border terrorism. So, let's set the better about Pakistan. There are also concerns that there are outfits in Pakistan, like recently we witnessed Jaish terrorists, you know, took out a rally in Karachi. So they are coming in support of Hamas terrorists. So is this true? Like, are they really in support and will they fight? No, 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 no. they are not fighting or anything, but this, you know, this is, the, this is a time given to them. You see, what they are trying to do is trying to coalesce and polarize Islamic opinion. That attack on Hamas. See, no, nobody has sympathies uh, and, and Israel should basically be very careful when it undertakes the Gaza attack. Because these attacks, if civilian casualties happen, as has happened yesterday uh, in a hospital, 500 people died by a missile attack. If those are the kind of things that happen, then whatever little sympathy many countries have uh, for Israel and for the attacks that were committed might be evaporated much faster. Uh, then what they can, so justification of force by force or killing people to, uh, to take revenge and retribution may give uh, rise to more terrorism and more violent extremism and the countries, Jaish, Muhammad and all these which are there all over the world will continue to feed that fe fever uh, for a long time to come. So, so what do you think, will Israel-Hamas conflict have its ripple effect in South Asia? Not only South Asia, it will have a global impact. We already talk, talked about its economic impact. Uh, we are going to see that the rapprochement that was happening in the Middle East, uh, there were chances of Saudi Arabia normalizing ties with Israel. All that India Mil Mil Middle East Economic Corridor, those are the big projects that we were talking about, thinking that there is going to be a rapprochement and modus vivendi among various countries in the region, or at least at the surface level. Now, that could have led to many new opportunities. All of those will find a hiatus now. So I think that this, uh, Israel, uh, unless a ceasefire happens, uh, the, host the, the hostages which are there with Hamas are released safely. Uh, the people in Gaza Strip are given adequate medical and humanitarian assistance, are allowed to live there. Uh, I doubt very much we will be seeing the repeat of it again. Atrocity upon the minority communities belonging to Sindh in Pakistan gets severe by the day. These people find themselves at the receiving end of abductions and forceful conversions, even after unaccountable protests by the locals to make their voices be heard and exiled Sindhis demanding intervention from the United Nations. The condition of the minorities in Sindh does not seem to improve anytime soon. The recent case of Radha Meghwar, a 13-year-old Hindu girl, has yet again brought this matter to the centre stage. But still the country is not realising the dire consequences it could face in response. We have a report. Minorities in Sindh have been on the receiving end of atrocities since the creation of Pakistan in 1947. Being exposed to forced conversions, abductions, violence, and attacks on their places of worship minorities in Sindh are treated as second-class citizens in their own homes. The incident that brought the issue of abduction and forced conversion to the center stage was reported from the Tando Muhammad Khan area of Sindh province recently. Radha Meghwar, a 13-year-old girl belonging to the Hindu community in Sindh, was abducted, which inevitably resulted in her forceful conversion to Islam and a forceful marriage against her will. I 
आराम करे शादी करे मुझे मदद करे वाह मुझे मदद करे गरीब वाली मुझे मदद करे वाह वाह बोली भैया यार गाली वाली शादी जो बोली शादी बाबा ने सुनी तो यार क्या करे बोली शादी यार किधर मिले तो उसी बाज में किधर मिले तो आला जी बाज में चाक रे आला तो किधर आल बोला बाज में गरीब वाला क्या करी बाबा in a separate incident rajita kohli yet another girl from the minority community met a similar fate belonging in the badin area of sindh the victim this time despite giving a statement in court of demanding to be returned to her relatives was sent to a safe house instead this incident caught massive attention on social media as the injustice was served even after a complaint was registered in hopes of getting justice rajita's case and the associated verdict of the pakistani court have yet again proved that the regime itself is involved in the strategic suppression of minorities in sindh not just being limited to individual abductions sindh has repeatedly witnessed mass killings and violence at the hands of security personnel The latest of them resulted in the killing of eight civilians in an open fire incident in Mari Jalbani village of Sindh. Incidents like these are repeatedly covered up by Islamabad, this time calling it collateral damage for a search operation for a separatist. Islamabad's brutality toward its own people is no longer hidden and gets regularly challenged on international platforms by exiled activists. from sindh lakhuluhana the secretary general of the world sindh congress in the recent session of the united nations human rights council at geneva made the voice of his people be heard as the state is collapsing there is literally no other institution except the army and intelligence agencies they are becoming more aggressive more ruthless more cruel so the human rights situation every front is worsening now the state is sponsoring the bandit gangs and they come they kidnap people and even when the ransom is given they are not releasing them and these you will be surprised these gangs they come on social media and they chant uh, army zindabad so just imagine who is behind them they are taking our life our life because land is our life they have decided they will take 1.3 million acres of land for carpet farming so sindhi people are dying literally of hunger of malnutrition of poverty recently they were flush that completely abundant so it is really worse situation and as a rogue state they are not ready to listen they don't care they don't bother suppression marginalization and mass violence minorities in sindh have borne the brunt of islamabad's cruelty however the country fails to realize that prolonged suppression over time can turn into a revolt that at the time of crisis which pakistan currently is going through can cause a total collapse of islamabad as we know it Pakistan on a regular basis tries to push illegal substances and drugs through the border of Jammu and Kashmir. The revenues generated through this illegal trade is yet again used by the country to spread terrorism and disrupt peace and tranquility in India. However, the continuous efforts of Jammu and Kashmir police to counter narco-terrorism are now bearing fruit and have successfully crippled Islamabad's effort towards the illegal trade. We have a report. The illegal drug trade was historically centered in Iran and Afghanistan but had shifted to Pakistan in the early 1980s due to revolution in Iran and the war in Afghanistan. This illegal drug trade serves as a substantial source of revenue for terrorist organizations operating within Pakistan. These groups 
clandestinely support prohibited drugs to the Jammu and Kashmir region, aiming to addict Kashmiri youth and incite them to take up arms against India. Recent events in Jammu and Kashmir highlight the gravity of the situation. The Jammu and Kashmir police confiscated cocaine valued at 300 crore rupees in the Ramban district and apprehended true drug smugglers from Punjab involved in this trade. हमें कुछ स्पेसिफिक इंफॉर्मेशन मिली थी ड्रग्स के गाड़ी की जिसके बाद हमने एक स्पेशल नाका जो है वो इस्टेब्लिश किया था एट रेलवे चौक बानिहाल उसके बाद वहाँ पे हमें एक इनोवा गाड़ी को हमने इंटरसेप्ट किया जिसका रजिस्ट्रेशन नंबर है एच आर टू डब्ल्यू फोर नाइन टू फाइव ये कश्मीर से जम्मू की तरफ जा रही थी और जब इसको इंटरसेप्ट किया और इसकी सर्च करी तो इसमें तीस किलो के करीब कोकेन जैसा दिखने वाला सब्सटेंस पाया गया जिसकी इंटरनेशनल ब्लैक मार्केट में कम से कम तीन सौ करोड़ की वैल्यू आंकी जा रही है और दो लोगों को इसके अंदर हमने अरेस्ट किया है Subsequently, in the aftermath of the cocaine seizure in Ramban, eight individuals, including a major drug kingpin, were arrested, with four hailing from Kupwara and four from Ludhiana, Punjab. Authorities seized over five crore rupees in connection with these arrests. Serving a dual purpose, revenues generated from the illegal drug trade are yet again employed to satisfy Islamabad's foremost intent to spreading cross-border terrorism, financially supporting local militants in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir is also a such route that is used repeatedly by the Pakistan agencies and many times by Pakistan's corruption. चलाने वाले जो वहाँ पर अलग अलग तरह के आका हैं और दहशतगर्द तंजीमों के जो लोग उसमें सरगुना हैं जो काम करते हैं वो भी इस तस्करी को नारको टैरर के जरिए से इस्तेमाल करते हैं ताकि जहाँ पर मरती हुई दहशतगर्दी में फिर से जान फूंक सके जो रिसोर्स जो फंडिंग दहशतगर्दी को चलाने के लिए ज़रूरत होती है इससे आने वाले पैसे को दहशत गर्दी को चलाने के लिए इस्तेमाल कर सके पिछले पाँच साल से लगभग उनतालीस केस ऐसे हुए जिसमें नारको टैरर का मिक्सचर देखा गया और सत्तर के करीब बल्कि सत्तर से ज़्यादा लोग ऐसे जो इन केसेस के अंदर गिरफ्तार किए गए और चार क्विंटल के करीब जो इस तरह की तस्करी का सामान जो नारको टैरर के केसेस में सिर्फ शामिल है मैं टोटल गिनती नहीं कर रहा हूं, वो पकड़ा गया अलग अलग तरह की ड्रग्स पकड़ी गई और लगभग सौ के करीब ऐसे हथियार और पांच आईडीज और बाकी ऐसा साजो सामान पकड़ा गया जो नारको टैरर के मॉड्यूल्स में शामिल था जिनको पुलिस ने बस्ट किया Since the abrogation of Article 370 and Article 35A in Jammu and Kashmir, there has been a noticeable decline in terror-related incidents. Nevertheless, Pakistan persists in its efforts to escalate the supply of illegal drugs into the Union territory with the aim of addicting Kashmiri youth. Pakistan has also resorted to using drugs on numerous occasions to smuggle drugs into Indian territory. Intelligence sources reveal that armed militant groups in Jammu and Kashmir have a growing need for funding to support their operations and drug trafficking stands as a substantial revenue source. The proceeds from the illicit drug trade are employed to acquire weapons, finance training and recruitment efforts and support other operational expenses. To ensure that the younger generation that is in Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir and even in Punjab falls prey to drugs. Pakistan has resorted to now narco-terrorism. As you know, Afghanistan is the largest producer of opium in the world and it refines this opium in the areas of the frontier provinces of Pakistan and of the Afghanistan region. The Laboratories that are there in the frontier regions of Pakistan are controlled by ISI again and the Pakistan Army 
and that is why it's easier for them to bring these drugs and send it across to India. And that is why they are now promoting the narco-terrorism after the failure of the armed terrorism that they had started in 90s. In response to this complex challenge, Indian security forces have undertaken various measures to combat narco-terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. They have initiated anti-drug operations and intensified efforts to intercept drug shipments and apprehend individuals involved in the drug trade both within Jammu and Kashmir and along the border with Pakistan. Additionally, security forces have incorporated advanced technologies such as unmanned aerial vehicles to curtail the inflow of drugs into the region. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.